Have you ever wanted to flow like water through dangerous situations and turn the battlefield into your own electrifying dance of death? Does emitting chain lightning from your fists sound appealing to you? How about killing Grandmaster level champions in two punches? What is going on Guardians, Dorverich here, and in this video I will be showcasing my personal Arc Hunter build using the new Arc 3.0 system. Arc's Rider was so weak for so long and now that it's finally good, it's pushed me to make my first ever build video for Destiny 2. And oh my god is it good. In the background you're seeing some solo Master Nightfall gameplay, more than 20 light under level, so this is as close to a Grandmaster as we can get this early in the season. As you can see, Chain Lightning punches delete everything. We're fast, we're invisible, we're tanky, we hit hard, and on top of all that just look at how many orbs we generate for our teammates. And the best part? This build doesn't even use artifact mods save for the recurring champion stunning and elemental resistance mods that we've been getting every season. You can keep running this exact build in future seasons and it will do just fine. Now let's dive into the build explanation. First we have our melee ability, Combination Blow. This, along with Gambler's Dodge, is central to our gameplay loop. And if you previously played Arx Rider before 3.0, this should be very familiar to you. We get a stacking damage buff up to 3 stacks every time we punch something to death, and each kill will refund our dodge. Since we're running Gambler's Dodge to fully refund our melee energy, we can keep punching and dodging back to back to back. Next we have our Aspects, Lethal Current and Flow State. Lethal Current is what gives us our Chain Lightning Punches. All we have to do is dodge, and then our next punch will both apply the new Jolt debuff and make a Lightning Aftershock. And since the Jolt is applied just a moment before the Aftershock goes off, the Aftershock will trigger Jolt's Chain Lightning. Flow State is how we get Amplified, and it also gives us some really nice bonuses while we have the buff. Faster dodge cooldown, damage reduction while dodging, and faster reloads. That's all on top of the normal speed boost we get while we have the Amplified buff. For Fragments, we're running Spark of Feedback, Resistance, Recharge, and Amplitude. Resistance and Amplitude are the ones I would consider core for this build. Since we're always in the thick of the fight, the extra damage reduction from Resistance comes in extremely handy, and Spark of Amplitude is like an orb mod for our melees. Feedback and Recharge are basically flex slots, since they're both nice to have but not essential to the build. You could swap them out for Magnitude and Shock, for example, if you wanted to lean more into grenades. But I personally have too much fun punching things to not go all in on the melee plan. For the Super, we're on the new Arc Javelin. Yes, I know the game says Gathering Storm, but let's be honest, Javelin sounds much cooler and fits better. Arc Staff got buffed and it's not half bad now, but the fire and forget nature of Javelin makes it a lot better for our build. It has a long range and does good sustained DPS, which is exactly what the rest of the build is lacking. Now for the two pieces that really tie all this together. Assassin's Cowl and a 1-2 Punch Shotgun. The 1-2 Punch Shotgun is how we deal with anything that won't die outright to a punch or two. If we point blank something with a shotgun and land every pellet, we get an absolutely disgusting 200% buff to our melee damage. Against bosses, it goes up to an even more insane 350%. You're not going to be doing any real sustained boss DPS like this unless you have a well or something to keep you alive through the boss hitting you back. But the burst damage is off the charts, and all it costs is a little bit of special ammo. The Wastelander M5 shotgun that drops from Dares of Eternity is ideal for this due to its extremely tight spread pattern. You can easily and consistently land every pellet to proc a 1-2 punch, whereas with most other shotguns there's often a little bit of RNG involved. Assassin's Cowl gives us an incredible amount of utility and survivability. Every time we melee kill something we heal to full health and become invisible. Between invisibility and the extra speed that we get from being amplified, we can freely reposition ourselves around the battlefield and burst down priority targets such as champions with our 1-2 punch combo. As for the primary and heavy weapons, you can really use whatever you feel like. 
I usually like to bring a relevant champion stun in the primary slot, and tractor cannon for the heavy if I'm in an especially spicy mood. Debuffing a boss with tractor cannon and punching them as hard as I possibly can is pretty satisfying. Otherwise, a standard DPS option will do to cover our weakness of having poor sustained DPS. I'd recommend a linear fusion for that. For armor, stat-wise we're going for 100 resilience first. This build is more or less indifferent to cooldown stats since the melee and dodge will fully refund each other, but resilience is extremely important. The 40% damage reduction we get at 100 resilience is huge. Stack that with some damage resist mods on the chest piece and it will be difficult to die in any normal content. I generally use one melee resist mod because we're always up in something's face, and whatever elemental resist mod is relevant to the activity that I'm doing. For nightfalls, I will always match the burn, and for anything else, I'll usually just slap on the seasonal dual resist mod and call it good. As for combat style mods, I'm running a hybrid charged with light and elemental well package. First, we've got Melee Wellmaker as our method of making elemental wells. Then we have Well of Ions, which will give a 30% damage boost to our next melee after picking up an arc well. Since every time we punch something to death, we're making one of those arc wells, this will be active nearly all the time. Next, we have Elemental Charge, which gives two stacks of Charged with Light every time we pick up one of our arc wells. Our Charged with Light payoff mod is Striking Light, which will make an orb for our teammates every time we get a melee kill, but more importantly, we get 25% damage resistance while sprinting. So now we're invisible and constantly healing from Assassin's Cowl, we're fast from Amplified, we take less damage when surrounded from Spark of Resistance, we take less damage when we dodge from Flow State, we're resistant to melee and elemental damage from our chest piece, and we take less damage while sprinting. It truly is hard to die. Our final combat style mod that we're running is Powerful Friends. Now the only function of this is to activate the secondary effect on Striking Light for that damage resistance, and Powerful Friends happens to give us a nice bump to mobility along the way. This could be replaced with any Arc Charged with Light mod and serve the same purpose. Lucent Blade if you're using a sword, or Reactive Pulse if you're not and you don't feel like using Powerful Friends. And there you have it, the strongest version of Arc Strider I have ever played. Arc 3.0 was a huge boon to Hunters. In one rework, Arc Hunter went from probably the most memed upon PvE subclass to the absolute monster you're witnessing right now. Soon I'm going to be redoing every dungeon solo flawless on exclusively Arc Strider, so stay tuned for that if you want to see more of this build in action. I hope you all enjoyed the build and breakdown. Since this is my first ever build video for Destiny, I'd appreciate any feedback or suggestions. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll do my best to answer every single one. Drop a like if you enjoyed, and for now I'll leave you with some Legendary Witch Queen campaign gameplay, so you can see how this build performs in a slightly less intense setting compared to Solo Master Nightfalls. I will see you in the next one, Guardians.
bravery inspired.